Hello, my name is Eric and welcome to my computational science video series. Uh, today we're going to start out by looking at MATLAB and how to do, uh, how to work with variables, printing, and types. Uh, this should be pretty quick because MATLAB is fairly intuitive. So I've opened MATLAB and I have a program uh, that is open. Now I'm just starting with an empty program. Uh, when I started MATLAB there was a small error. I hope it doesn't cause any problems. All right, so in MATLAB, creating variables is easy. You just say x equals one and you have a variable. And by default in MATLAB, all our variables are floating point numbers. Now I do recommend when you're programming in MATLAB to put a semicolon at the end of each line. Uh, that way we're not printing things we don't want printed to the screen. Because uh, by default, if you don't have the semicolon, things are printed. Now if we want to display something, we can use uh, the display command for display x or I prefer using fprintf. Now with the fprintf command, uh, we do need to use single quotes. And with our single quotes, we're gonna put something in here. And we're gonna say x equals, or you could put some number, whatever you want in there equals, and they're gonna put percent %f. All right, and then in the fprintf, we have to put a, a comma, and we have to put the variable we wanna print. So we're gonna print, uh, yeah, we're gonna print x. And where we have this percent %f, uh, that means we're going to print a floating point number. So for printing in MATLAB, we need to know our variable type. So if we're going to run this, uh, we can see that the display x is going to display x in three lines, and then the print is going to display it uh, like this. Now, you will notice that this new line here, th there's no extra line. So we might want to put a forward slash n, which is kind of a, a formatting command, and it's a C style formatting command that tells us to put a new line. And this forward slash n will create a new line in C, C++, Python, and Fortran when we have strings. So it's a very handy command and it relates to all the languages we're working with. So you can see when we put this forward slash n, uh, instead of having everything on one line, we do have this line break. All right, so that's just kind of a quick way to print. Uh, but it's possible that we might also have a variable like i that is an integer. And I think I think it, we could do like int maybe 64, uh, 12, and this will give us a 64-bit integer, and that's going to be i. Now if we want to print i, another number equals, and we're going to put percent %f just like we are before, now, if you're familiar with the C types, you're going to know there's an error here. And we're going to run it, and oh, it, it actually worked. Uh, this isn't what we wanted, though, because 12 is supposed to be an integer, not a floating point. So when we want to print an integer, uh, we can change that F to an I, and we're going to be able to print our number as an integer. Uh, in C and C++, I think it would usually result in an error. Uh, what MATLAB does is it's smart and it's like, hey, it's a number, so we're at least going to print it as a floating point number and do a quick conversion for you. All right, so this is just kind of how conversions and things work in MATLAB. We might want to know the type of data that we're working with because by default, we might get a bunch of stuff as floats, but we might want to know, hey, if we're getting a number from another function, what kind of data are they giving me? And we can do this. We can basically... Uh, the easy way is to use display because we don't know what type of data we're printing so it's kind of hard to use the fprintf uh, and if we want to say or actually if we don't want to do this i mean display is the same as not doing anything but we can basically say class of i or class of x and what this is going to do is it's going to print to screen uh, the class that i is so when we do this i is an integer 64 bit and x is a double precision number. All right, so the class is a way we can get that kind of information as to what type of data we're working with. MATLAB is very, very powerful, so we can do things. Uh, we can actually redefine a variable like x was defined to be one, but we can redefine x to be five plus three j. And what this is going to do is this is going to define x as a complex number, and we can say y is equal to one, uh, minus 2j. So x and y are now complex numbers and we can basically display x plus y and this will just sort of print x and y to the screen you know and it's complex numbers. Alright now if you want to use the fprintf 
Uh, this is not really set up for complex numbers. You'd have to kind of create your own hacks to do it, perhaps make your own printing functions, which is how I often do things, but we'll look at those those techniques later. So fprintf is a convenient way to print strings. If we want to know the class of x, we can do that. So fprintf is how we display strings. So when we have a complex number, apparently the type of a complex number is simply a double. So in MATLAB, they must sort of just sort of, they must sort of be assuming that all numbers are complex in a way. Uh, MATLAB is really made for math, and I find when I'm doing MATLAB programming, I typically don't concern myself with the types of variables too much, but we do have the class command to give us some insight into what type of variable we're working with. Um, in reality, during this video series, when we go to MATLAB, it'll usually be for importing more or less direct mathematical statements. Um, if we are concerned about doing things that have, have a lot of type dependency or things like that, we're going to more likely work in C++ um, because Python and MATLAB both kind of are a little bit easy going about types. But I do think MATLAB is incredibly powerful and it's really good uh, for working with, you know, large amounts of data, displaying and graphing. And I honestly think that graphing and visualization in MATLAB is a fantastic thing, um, especially when you're doing mathematical work. So I think I'm going to wrap up here. Uh, thank you for your time and keep on coding.